Yeah, well, firstly, you know, although it's a friendly, there's never a friendly, especially against my big friend, uh, Big Mallet. Uh, I know the competitive nature of the man, so I would like him to, to hold back, but uh, that's what I expect from Nick, and that's what I've learned from him. And I have a lot of respect for Nick, you know, he, was, he and Alan Solomon was one of my mentors. Um, yeah, yeah, I've been involved in 28 test matches as assistant of them, so I've got a lot of respect for them, and it's great to coach against them. And uh, you only get a team on the Monday before the test match, and at first, you know, because we don't have time, we wanted to play our best side and, and give them a game under the belt, even if it's a friendly to go into the Wales test. Where I wanted to pick my best team now, I'm probably going to look at a few combinations, uh, look at the captaincy, and use this test match or game to, uh, to get us ready for the first test match. Yes, and one thing I've learned as a national coach that, uh, you know, you can pick your side, you can think you're on the right track and then suddenly there's a curveball somewhere that you don't expect. So uh, just look at this series, you know, I thought our backline is quite settled. We've played some great rugby and scored the most tries in the world. Suddenly uh, your captain is not available, uh, your outside centre is not available and maybe a guy like Franz Stein is also struggling with injuries. So three centres played more than 50 test matches each is not available and you're going to go with youngsters. So uh, obviously you want to you wanna use this year to, to get settled for the World Cup, but uh, we also have to use this year to give some youngsters a chance. Some guys have put up their hands and you need to build at least a second tier of players that can play in the World Cup. John de Villiers is an awesome, awesome leader of men. He's an unbelievable captain, an unbelievable human being. And uh, the great thing for me that made it easy that uh, he was the SRQ player of the year last year. You know, the players respect that. They respect that, that the captain is playing well. And that's why since day one I said, I'm only going to announce a captain year by year. And even John, which is an unbelievable leader, knows that his place is not cemented in the team. You know, you want a guy of integrity, you want a guy that leads from the front, and you want a guy that the players respect because at the end of the day, uh, the players play for their captain. You also want a type of leader that uh, that fits into your mould and, uh, you know, you have to have a player that backs you and backs your decisions on the field because you're not there. And you have to think the same, more or less the same about the game. So uh, I'm very, very happy that we've got a lot of leaders now in the group and there's about seven or eight guys that can lead South Africa. Looking towards the World Cup, it's always important, but I, I need to think I'm worried about the first game against the World 15. But if I have to answer that question, is that uh, people think we've got a great draw. Um, you know, I don't read too much into that. I believe that if you're going to win the World Cup, you have to win seven games. It doesn't matter if it's the first game is New Zealand or the last game or whoever you have to play. In our group, um, you still have to be first or second, but then where it gets difficult for us is in the quarters, we're either going to play Australia, England, which I believe is going to be one of the favourites, or Wales, which is going to be a tough game. Then in the semis, uh, we probably will meet New Zealand, and then you're going to go to the finals. So people just look at the, at the pool, which is not the main thing. The main thing is what happens after the pool game. So I truly believe that as a coach and as a mindset, if you try to work out all the permutations, you already, uh, you've already lost the World Cup. Our mindset will be, it doesn't matter who we play. We have to win seven games. It doesn't matter in which order. We just want to go out there and win every single game. Just to add to that, you know, I'm very happy with the way we've played overseas. We've won uh, eight of our last games overseas. The only one we've lost against New Zealand. So, you know, the World Cup's away from home. We've only got eight test matches left in South Africa. And then it's all, you know, all away from home. So you have to be able to win away from home and uh, hopefully we can learn from that. You know, the nature of me, of me is I'm very, very competitive. I'm very proud of my country and, you know, I know there's a huge responsibility towards our supporters. So uh, it's our first day back of the box. You see guys like Victor and, and uh, Skulk and, and uh, a guy like Henri Rousseau. You know, a lot of those guys play down at test matches and they're like little kids when they join the box. They're so passionate and so happy that they just get another chance. So that motivates me. That just shows what a Springbok means for, for South Africa and for the players. So I just want this team to go out there and smash everything we play against.